All right, hey everyone, this is the short recap for week 27 Hobby Kernel Dev. In this stream, I successfully finish exercise two of lab three from the MIT course. Finally, this has taken me like a bunch, like, like over a month basically, but I basically got and finished the last two functions. It was a lot of just kind of reading code and understanding stuff, but just to go through the stream, um, Basically, I would recommend skipping the first 40 minutes. The first 40 minutes are me um, kind of cleaning up the code from last time, doing a, like a little bit of the unit testing, just kind of cleaning up the elf loader a little bit, but cleaning up my git history kind of. It's, it's not really the main focus of the stream, but I spend 40 minutes just kind of getting things into a nice state for me to continue development. Um, around the 40 minute mark, I finally finish cleaning things up to a suitable point where I can continue. And I start implementing the, the next function, which is env create. And in order to do that, I start, I start reading some of these other helper functions which it tells us to use like env alloc. And that's the function that basically pops an environment structure off of the free list. So also an environment is basically just a process. For some reason in this class and in this code base, they call processes environments for some reason, but it, it's basically just um, popping a, a available um, process or task or environment structure off of the free list. Um, process, task, and environment are, I kind of am using them interchangeably. Um, but you, you get a new structure and basically just um, pop, like construct it. Um, set the fields that need to be set, initialize the virtual memory for the, for the process, stuff like that. Um, and so that's just kind of a lot of reading code. To, to refresh on exactly what the environment has inside of it. It has a trap frame, it has a status, um, it has some parent and information, it has its own unique ID, stuff like that. Um, that's pretty much it. Okay, in this, in this screenshot, I am um, adjusting something that I didn't complete earlier. So in my elf loader, it, there was this comment that it said we needed to do something based on the entry point, but I didn't know what they meant. But then after reading the env alloc function, I realized we need to set this field in the environment's trap frame to the entry point um, as described in the elf header. So I did that um, and just reading, then went on to a little bit of a side quest to learn more about the trap frame, going into the manual a little bit. Um, it was a little bit hard to find information about this, but I think I found approximately where they d document it. Um, here is also part of the manual where that happens. Oh, I can go into full screen to make it easier to see. Um, and yeah, so then I, I just start implementing this end create function. It's it's really not that complicated. It's just a couple calls. Like the complicated work was in more of those existing functions that I was writing in the last few weeks. But in this case, it's pretty simple. Just call env alloc, allocate the structure and construct it. Then call load i code to um, load the binary into the memory uh, of the process. Uh, described by that environment, um, and then just just set this type thing. So super easy, um, super super easy. Here is me just looking into the header to kind of learn more about these um, these constants, like for the status, for example. Um, this is just reading a bit of like the documentation. And now here's the end run thing. And the point of env run is to take a given um, environment structure. And remember, an environment is basically just like a process or like a task. Um, that, 
that describes like a basically like a thread on like a, a single runnable like thread i guess and then it kind of context switches into that given uh, environment from the currently running one which is stored in a global variable and and the code just nicely has like all the things you need to do um, so i just did them like you need to um, modify the current running environment to make it um, not be in a runnable a running state but uh, kind of demote it back to only runnable do some other things like update some counter you uh, switch into the the virtual memory of the new um, process and then call this function called end pop tf to really like drop into that um, environment and start executing code from there. And I, I, yeah, I will go on this little side quest because I have this bug. It's like this null pointer to reference, whatever. That happens at an hour 24. Then I figure out the null pointer to reference. And then I start reading env pop tf, which is the actually kind of low level and interesting function for kind of doing the context switch and dropping into user space. Um, basically, it's just some inline assembly. Uh, the function receives a pointer to a trap frame, which which is basically a structure that kind of mirrors the some, um, some documentation in the x86 manual that describes exactly what um, kind of memory layouts need to look like and what, what is stored in memory um, when for example, um, like doing an IRET and stuff like this. Um, so this this function basically just takes a trap frame, points ESP at it, and then does these various kinds of pops to to load the state in memory at the stack and then load them into the CPU state, like like all the general purpose registers, like some segment selectors, um, and then it finally does an it does an IRET, which loads a bunch of stuff like an EIP. I think a code segment, some other stuff. And then basically I spend just kind of a while trying to understand all this inline assembly. And you can see that in more detail around one hour, 40 minute mark. Um, and towards the end, I basically just run the kernel and it is totally expected for the kernel to kind of enter a triple fault loop here because the user space program is going to start executing, but it's going to do, it's going to trigger um, a system call and the kernel is not set up to handle system calls yet. And so that's going to cause a triple fault. And here's me just in the debugger um, verifying that we do indeed uh, drop into user space. We do execute code in, in user space and we do actually um, hit the the yeah the interrupt uh instruction basically i need to kill my palm tree timer um so yeah basically that's how i confirmed that things are are actually working as expected and so next time we're going to implement um support for interrupts or at least start implementing support for interrupts and that's like pretty much it i spend a little bit of time at the very end, kind of looking forward into what's next, um, which is basically just getting into a lot of the specific details of the x86 architecture around interrupts and stuff like that. But nothing too interesting there. You don't need to watch that part. Um, and that's pretty much it. So thanks a lot for watching this recap. Um, you, can, you can watch the full stream on my channel, and I'll see you next time.